Hi and welcome to what I think is your seventh Python tutorial. I'm not exactly sure about the number, but anyway, today we're going to be talking about something called the for loop. Uh, so basically, imagine you have a list of random foods, foods that you like, right? So foods I like would obviously include pizza, um, sandwiches, because we all know I'm obsessed with sandwiches. I think I'm more obsessed with the word than the food, but that's irrelevant. Potatoes. Um, what else? I think we should like, you know, throw something healthy in there uh, for the sake of something peaches sound nice. Right? So you have a few foods that you like in a list and what you want to do is you want to print each food one by one. So each element of this list, you want to print it one by one. So uh, you could obviously do something like print foods and then print it at zero, then, you know, repeat the same statement and then print it one by one. And that would take you forever. But lucky for you, there is an easy, efficient way in Python and it's called looping. Well, it's present in every language. Um, so Python uses something called the for loop. So basically we say for food in foods right so basically food here is a random variable it's a placeholder and foods is your list so when i say for food in foods what python will do is it will go through the whole list foods and food will take up one value at a time so the first time the loop runs it will be pizza second time it will be sandwiches third time it will be potatoes fourth time it will be peaches and then we can just say print food, oops, food. And that's it. Uh, when you run that, sandwiches will, let's increase this a bit. Pizza, sandwiches, potatoes, peaches. Pretty simple, huh? So that's pretty easy. That's basically what looping is. Now, I want you to remember that uh, you can have multiple statements within a loop like I remember even like last time when we talked about if else statement I only gave you one statement to execute within the if else condition that's not like you know it's not necessary that every time you run a loop you can only use one line of code inside you can use as many as you want the only thing that you need to do is when you go to the next line you need to make sure whatever you do in the next line, it is indented the same amount as the first. So anything that is indented is part of the loop. And once you go to the next line and you exit the intent, indent, you have exited the loop. Just how it works, okay? So, you know, for example, if you maybe want to print the food and then you want to print the length of the characters present in that particular string, right? So you could just say print and the function for printing the length of a string is len and in brackets, whatever string. So in this case, the string is food. So when you run that, it will print pizza and then it will print the number of letters in pizza, the number of characters in pizza. So there you go. It looks like this pizza five, sandwiches 10, potatoes eight, peaches seven. Pretty simple. So if you had to do this one by one, this would take at least eight lines of code. But here we managed to do that, we managed to achieve it within three lines. So that's basically what loops are used for. Now, there could be situations where you don't want to loop through the entire list. You just want to loop till maybe the second element or something like that. So then you can just use uh, list splitting as I've already taught you during lists right so you maybe you just put a two here so what it will do is it will say all right so I got to look for each variable in the list foods starting at the beginning of the list and then ending at zero one two the second element obviously the second element will not be included so it will just do pizza and sandwiches all right so you run that 
and it's just pizza 5 sandwiches 10 and that's it so pretty simple right um i guess what you could do is now you could uh, instead pick up a list of numbers and try to experiment with that otherwise the for loop is actually really really simple there's nothing much about it it's very intuitive and once you start coding more you learn more about the list so maybe search up programs you can practice and have fun with it uh, that's it for today's video um, i'll put the link down to the website in the description box below if you missed last time's tutorial i will link that in the description box as well and see you next time bye